היי. היי אגן. כן? אנחנו נפגשים שוב. כן. לא, אנחנו רוצים לעשות את זה באנגלית. We should talk in English, I agree. But I always open my videos by saying, hello שושנים. So it's okay. אוקיי. So we go back. probably 30 years ago or more, then we, did, we made programs uh, about uh, all kinds of things, like, for instance, Time. And Alice in Wonderland. And Alice in Wonderland. Um, and uh, now we meet again in Skopje. And our first topic is whether consciousness is merely the subjective experience of introspection. Yep. So, go ahead. The problem of uh, consciousness is by far the most widely debated problem in the history of philosophy. And it is intimately linked with another problem known as the psychophysical problem, which used to be known as the psychosomatic problem. <laughs> Look okay. how words change. Yes, yes. It is simply the linkage between the physical body and our consciousness and our awareness of ourselves. The perception of ourselves is individuals, as, as atoms, as separate units. As monads. Yes, as monads if you want to use Leibniz. Di- dif- different entities from the world. Yes, and there is no way to connect, there is no straight line which leads from the hardware, which is the body, to this experience. And yet, everyone, every human being, attests to this experience, confirms it, describes it. So it must be real. We can't, we can't say that it's a, a common delusion. It's this, it must be real. And so how, how to connect the dots? So there have been numerous schools. There's been dualism and monism and numerous attempts to connect the dots. What had been common to all these attempts, especially in the modern age, let's say with Husserl, with Brentano, what's been common was to say that mental states And physical states are somehow correlated. We know there's a correlation. Something happens in the mental f- arena, something happens in the physical arena. So there is a correlation. And that what does distinguish them is consciousness. What distinguishes the body from the soul? The, the, what distinguishes the, the, exactly the physical states from the mental states? Is consciousness, consciousness. and intentionality. In other words, Physical objects are not directed at something. They, they're just there. They're there. Yeah, they, they are immovable. They are, yes. They are, they're just there. While mental states are always directed at something. Right. You love someone. You, you hate, want something. You hate something. You hate you some politician. You yeah. are attracted to. Yes. It's always directional. So we call this intentionality. So these are the two distinguishing features. Mental states. have consciousness, and they have intentionality. Now, what's my attempted contribution? I'm trying to establish something which I, I call intentionalism. I'm saying that consciousness is a secondary phenomenon, not a primary phenomenon. I'm saying that the primary phenomenon is intentionality. And I'm saying that intentionality is not only common to to mental states that have to do with introspection. So let me summarize my thesis and then hand over it to you. My thesis is that intentionality is a mode of relating to external physical objects and at the same time a mode of relating to internal objects. When, we, when our intentionality is inverted When our intentionality goes inwards, inwards, this is what we call consciousness. And the introspection. The introspection is the process of directing, of, of directing your intentionality, intentionality inwards, in internal objects. When, you, when we yeah. say inwards, it's yeah. also only a figure of speech because it's yeah. not, you're not looking at your liver and your spleen. Yes. You're looking at other at, mental states actually. At, at, Past experiences, yes, yes. Which phases are, of yes. development. So, we have, we, intentionality is universal, not, not like in other schools where intentionality is unique to mental states and consciousness. But I'm saying that intentionality is universal. You have intentionality towards this camera. 
and you have intentionality towards your memory. Wait, 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 love. I want to mm. understand. Uh, intentionality, when you say it's universal, you mean it's universal for humanity? Yes. Or is it universal for all, all living creatures? Yes, I'm coming to that in a minute. It's an excellent okay. point. Okay. It's actually an excellent point. Okay. So, we start with human beings. Human beings. We start with human beings, but we will get further. Okay. We start with human beings. And what is, the, what is the novelty in what I'm saying? Novelty is to say that intentionality is the organizing principle of mental life. You can direct your intentionality outwards towards physical objects, and you can direct it inwards towards internal objects, which are essentially other mental states, memories, beliefs, etc. Because it's the same principle of action, we confuse mental states and physical states because it's the same principle, it's a unifying principle. And so when you direct your intentionality inwards, you call it consciousness. When you direct it outwards, you call it the physical world. Or observation? Observation of the physical world. Yes. And tomorrow we will, um, later we will discuss the, the issue of reality and we will see that in modern science, reality is observer defined. So, your intentionality towards the outer world also creates and defines the outer world. In other words, there's no distinction between no physical distinction. objects and mental objects. Yeah. Now, about uh, regarding your question, which is really uh, an excellent question, which is the reason I want to talk to you, okay, and nobody okay. else. <laughs> okay. um, yes, I think intentionality is an organizing principle of life, all life. When intentionality happens, with non-humans, with dogs, with cats, with bees, genes, with plants, with genes. genes. When it happens with non-humans, the selfish gene, we call it te teleology. Okay. Intentionality that happens in the physical world or the animate world, which is not human, non-human animate world, is called teleology and is forbidden by science. Science proscribes, not pre prescribes but proscribes teleology. You're not allowed to say the bee is flying to the flower in order to, uh, to collect pollen. To collect pollen and, and, to, to, make, and to create... In order to make, to make, to make honey. honey. You're not allowed to say this. In science. In science. And I think that's a mistake of science. You think that you can say of that? Of course. I think intentionality is an organizing principle of the world. Absolutely. Even to some extent of physical objects because they are observer-defined. It leads to animism, in effect. There is a spirit in every object, in a way. Okay. In a way, but it's not a spirit. It's the mind. The mind determines... It imbues, yes. imbues in stones yes. and, and, and uh, sticks yes. uh, intentionality. Yes, the, exactly. The mind is directional. It, it, it intends the outside world and it intends the inside world. But when it intends the inside world, we call it consciousness. We just give it two names. And when it intends the outside world, what we do you call mean it by reality. Intends? Intentionality. Direct oh, itself oh, at. Oh. So you think coined the, the word. Think of the, think of the uh, mind as a laser beam. Okay. A laser beam. A laser if beam. you direct the laser beam inwards, you call it consciousness. Yes. If you direct it outwards, you call it reality. <laughs> Simple. There is no psychophysical problem. It's just how we direct the intentionality. There was the belief until more or less a hundred years ago, there was the belief that the outside world is independent of the, of the observer and the mind. Until Heisenberg. Until, until the Copenhagen interpretation of, of the Heisenberg and Schrödinger, more, more Schrödinger, Schrödinger uh, um, um, equation. equation. So, but today, increasingly, uh, the overwhelming perception in, in physics and science is that the mind is a major determinant, if not the only determinant, of the phys of physical reality. The individual mind. The individual. I don't know. The, the, the individual mind in collaboration with, with other minds. Yes. We the, come to it. this is a reality discussion. Okay. So this is my thesis. Okay. That we are all intentional, we, we intend ourselves towards. And actually, intentionality, as I said, was first described by Husserl, Guentano. It's not my invention. But they stopped, they 
Husserl and Brentano said intentionality is a mental thing. I mean, that's where they stopped because they were not exposed to quantum mechanics. They didn't have the physics of today. So they still maintained the Cartesian, Cartesian distinction between the observed world and the observing mind. Like these are two totally unrelated things, which is not true. Yes. Um, the question is, what, what do you gain by your hypothesis? A lot, in my view. If you come to accept that everything is a mental state, including what hitherto was called reality, is actually a mental state caused by, by intending, the act of intending, wrought, wrought on by intentionality, then, first of all, you get rid of the psychosocial pro uh, psycho physical problem. Physical. Or psychosomatic problem. You get rid of it. How? Because there's no distinction. There are mental states inside your head. If you want to get better, if you have a disease, then you will because, because you, you... No. 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 This is magical thinking. Okay. No. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the distinction between mental states inside your skull and mental states outside your skull is ridiculous. It's all mental states. Even what we call reality is a mental state in the sense that minds create reality. Now, of course you can see this in daily life. You and I can design a building. It's a mental state. It involves imagination, it involves cognition, it involves memory, it involves this, this is agreement. Yes, agreement. It's, yes, it's totally mental. Common norms, common um, uh, aesthetic values. And all of this is mental. You would agree. All of this is mental. mental. But then we can build a building, and suddenly the building becomes the reification of our mental state. Yes. The embodiment right. of our mental state. Yes, it does. The transition from mental to real is an illusion. It's it's wrong. It's a delusion. There is no distinction between reality and mental states, or consciousness. It's simply that when we direct intentionality inwards, we have a different experience than when we direct it outwards. And in order to survive, evolution created in us the delusion that physical objects are independent of us. because. It would be very confusing if you were to think that you are creating reality. It would, it would hamper your survival chances. It would, it would confuse you a lot. But if you believe that objects are totally independent of you, then it's much easier to manipulate, for example, to create a map of the world where objects well, are fixed. Are fixed, are, are, fixed. are there. Exactly. The problem, exactly. You're a good interlocutor. The problem is that if reality is determined by your mind, then reality is fuzzy. It is. Fuzzy. Yes. It's, and that is very detrimental to survival, because you need, for example, to make predictions. The huge shock was quantum mechanics. May I interject? Of course you may interject. I was thinking, you know, I, I don't know if I read it somewhere I, or I heard it from somebody, that the simile of the difference or the, the, the distance between the nucleus of an atom and its surroundings, uh, that is the electrons, is like the distance between a grain of salt and the walls of a cathedral. Now, were I to see around me atoms the size of cathedrals having nuclei the size of a, a grain of salt, then really I wouldn't be able to survive, I wouldn't be able to talk to you, and I wouldn't be able to drink a, a cup yeah. of water. And had reality been determined by the coalescence of minds, the coalition of minds, or the consensus of minds, which is the beginning to be the current view, then reality would have been a stochastic process, a, a probabilistic process. Quantum mechanics describes reality, not relativity theory. Quantum mechanics describes reality. And quantum, quantum mechanics tells you... T 
tells you that everything you think you know about reality is a fake. Is false. It's a model intended to help you to survive, but it's not reality. It's not real. In other words, our models of reality are not real. What, what does uh, what the, what physics what does physics describe? It describes our models of survival. Physics does not deal with reality. It deals with our perception of reality. Do the physicists know that? If they are sufficiently advanced in physics, yes, of course. So you have Bohm, you have uh, Feynman, you have uh, they all. Feynman, I, I met Feynman. I spent many, 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 many hours talking to him. And um, and Feynman used, used to tell me that yes, in his in his mind, uh, ultimately physics is the ultimate form of uh, of uh, mysticism. And we'll come to it when we talk about physics. We have okay. everything is okay. covered in, okay. in one or, or but it's good to start with consciousness. Okay. So how do we uh, conclude our, our session? Well, we still have ten minutes. We have ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes and. People okay. like us, <laughs> we like to talk, so okay, okay. we have another 10 minutes. But you ask me, what is it good for? Okay, right. why, is it, why is it good to see, or how is it beneficial to see the world my way, let's say, rather than, you know. And I think it's about responsibility and about reconciling yourself with, with the universe. Because you see what happened with the cult mainly with Descartes, and later with, with? Descartes, René Descartes. Descartes. Ah, Descartes. 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 Yeah. René Descartes, and later, much later, uh, the idealists and so on. What happened? A divorce. A divorce between the world and the mind. Yes, I am uh, yeah. cogito ergo sum. Yes, I am. I am. It's a solipsistic stance. It is, and it yeah. even has, has a, a problem there, because he wouldn't be able to say the sentence didn't he have a language, and the language is the creation of, yes. uh, of a multitude of, of, yeah. of, of people. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and there are many other issues with this. Flaws. Yes, many other flaws. But the most worrisome part was that when the Enlightenment started, it was informed essentially by idealists. And the end result was a divorce between men and, and nature. When you say idealists, do you mean do-gooders? No, 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 no. Or um, people who... School of idealism in philosophy. Okay. The most notable are uh, Kant, uh, and the last one is Hegel. Yes. Okay. Between Kant and Hegel, okay. let's see. And so, this created a divorce between men and nature. Now, men had divorced nature twice, and we're going to discuss this, we have a, a topic about nature. But men had divorced nature twice. Once with religion where religion told men, you are the crown of creation. Yes. You can you, do anything you, you do want. Whatever you, whatever you want. As long as you don't eat from yeah. the... Yeah, pollute, yeah. steal, rob, kill. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. yours. Yes. It's all yours. Yes. That was the first time men divorced nature. Yes. The second time men divorced nature is when men was told, you are an impartial observer, disinterested. You're standing aside. You're calling... Things, names. You're, you're yeah, naming. Yeah, exactly. You're you naming just, nature. You're just observing and classifying and understanding. And so, like, there's nature and there's you as an observer. This schism was destructive, utterly destructive, and led us where we are today. So, my, my thesis reunites. It's a thesis of reunification because it says the mind, the mind can be directed inwards, and then you have consciousness. The mind can be directed outwards, and then you create reality. But there is no distinction between the mind and reality, and that's, a, that's an, the idea of idealism. It's an idealism, a form of idealism. But merged, idealism merged with, uh, f with physics, let's say. Idealism plus physics. So that you begin to accept responsibility, you begin to understand that the distinction between you and nature is artificial and that you have some kind of role as a creator. As a creator. It's about creation. So we are taking on the role, the mythical role of God. That's a very interesting uh, topic in itself because I think the same way we divided ourself, ourselves from nature, we, can. we divided ourselves from God. And, and, and we, can, we can cure what we, what we made wrong, what we, what we uh, destroyed, 
by recombining or reuniting. Yes, by understanding that we are. We are. we are part of nature. Just we are, not yes. part. We, we nature, are nature. We create nature and nature creates us, us. in return. Yes. And it's all through the process of intentionality. That's more or less the main benefit. Okay, thank you. Thank you.